Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Superstars of Wrestling Review Series. July 4th, 1992 is on tap today. Hopefully we're going to have up through September up today. That's my goal anyway. Depending how work goes, High Energy and Bob Bradley and Joe Milano is up first. Uh, High Energy, of course, Owen Hart and Coco wear. Don't know what they're wearing as far as gear. Um, in the sense of, if you've never seen High Energy before... Iridescent jackets with uh, checkered flags and checkered pants. Not really sure what's going on. It's over with the kids anyway. Um, not, I have not seen Joe Milano before. Frankie the Parrot, of course, along with Coco. Owen Hart, a couple of years off of the Blue Blazer run. I actually love the Blue Blazer, and, and uh, it's so sad to me that Owen passed away in that gimmick. It's obviously sad he passed away at all, but certainly the tie being to that gimmick also makes it sad. Inziguri by Owen and a nice drop kick. Bob Bradley, of course, who has been part of World Class Championship Wrestling. Um, and we covered him in the, in the 340 um, episode version of the World Class Review. If you haven't been over there, check that out. Certainly do hear so here right on the channel. Double clothesline by Coco and Owen. Coco, of course, been around the WWF since 1986. They do an inset with the Nasty Boys where the Nasty Boys promise to once and for all get rid of high energy. High energy, I think, could have been a little bit more of a tag team, you know, in, in nature. But um, they just, they, they never really took off. They never hit ground. And, I mean, this is the second foray for Owen Hart into tag team wrestling, the new foundation with Jim Neidhart in 91, then this in 92. Anyway, drop kick by um, Owen, or by Coco from the top, uh, with Owen holding Bradley aloft. An update on the big boss man and his battle with Nails is up next. They also promote the battle of superstars. I miss uh, Coliseum videos so, so much. Um, and I'm actually going to do a whole series on Coliseum videos that are available just because, well, if you've never, if you didn't grow up around Coliseum video, I think you're missing out. It was basically like a house show with multiple really good matches. Um, and then, of course, Big Boss Man promises to come back. He says it's the most dangerous and uh, devastating punishment he's ever taken, but Boss Man promises and vows revenge on Nails, which he does get. By the Survivor Series. I don't remember as a kid ever seeing Boss Man and Nails in person. Although, I wouldn't really have cared to because I didn't care for the feud very much. Jason Knight of ECW fame against Rick the Model Martell. Of course, the model still on the heels of his feud with Tatanka. And um, Martell, you know, still wearing the, the uh, eagle feathers. Great athleticism by Martel, who's wearing uh, pinkish, purplish tights, uh, and uh, hits a hits a back elbow after a few leapfrogs. Martel, much more talented than I think he gets credit for. Former AWA champion, and uh, um, his heel run may have been his best WWF work. Uh, he, in quick order, gets the Boston Crab, gets a victory there. Kerry Dave, um, Kerry Davis against Crush is up next. And obviously, we get what we get as far as that is concerned. Um, not a very offensive match for Mr. Davis, as Davis is a guy who ends up uh, uh, getting manhandled by Crush, the backbreaker, and all of that. Um, you know, it's it's very clear that Crush, at the, at the time, they're wanting to push him pretty heavy. They never get as far with Crush as I think they want to. I mean, he hits some good stuff. Backbreakers, leg drops, and the like. Um, Crush, I think, I, I saw him have some really good matches in this era at house shows. Good for his size and, and all of that. But again, you had to be... In, mood, in the mood for a power guy. I still think they could have done some more with uh, him coming out of demolition. The head the head crunch finish, I don't think, was the greatest thing ever for him. Uh, then we see Kamala and Davey Boy Smith with uh, uh, promos from the event center, basically. And they, they promote the Superstars Wrestling Ice Cream Bars. I wish those things were still around. 
those things were just totally awesome. Anyway, um, Bulldog talks about his battle with the repo man, every dog has his day sort of thing. Davy Boy, never really a strong promo, and I, obviously as a baby fish, you're not going to give him a manager, but certainly him picking up Jim Cornette when he turns heel is a big thing a few years later. Uh, Kamala, basically with Har Dr. Harvey Whippleman, Kamala does his screaming routine. Um, Harvey Whippleman talks about how Kamala's going to take out just about everybody in the WWF. Really simple promo there. Uh, Papa Shango and Joe McMullen. It's in interesting to me that they don't do a lot with Papa Shango in terms of wrestling. I mean, they, they've done gimmicks with him. For the last several weeks, uh, McMullen here, no different. He, uh, they, they don't even let uh, Papa Shango get get into the match before he does the curse thing, fire out of his hands. He, uh, the McMullen is uh, having almost, I guess you'd say, a Charlie horse or something. And uh, there's a a wonderful beware the curse. Uh, poster from a from a fan at ringside i don't know if that was a plan or what that was um actually surprised that people who believed in voodoo hoodoo and the like weren't offended by this gimmick to the point of writing to wwe maybe they didn't it was never talked about but anyway uh kamala uh, i'm sorry papa shango goes to work on uh on the his opponent gut wrench suplex and the like uh, and then hits the shoulder breaker, one, two, three, gets the victory. I mean, Papa Shango certainly not a awesome wrestler at the time. He wasn't ready for this particular role. The event center, Ric Flair and Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Eric are your promos. Flair talks about becoming the world champion the second time. Uh, Kerry Von Eric promises to, you know, make it right, get back to the top. Very generic promo there, but again, you can't really fault him in the sense of, you know, here's a guy who's dealing with substance abuse issues, and this is 1992, this isn't 2012, where they would have sent him to rehab. I mean, they obviously encouraged him to go, but you can't force a guy to go as an independent contractor, and, and Kerry wasn't the best at taking care of himself in that regard. Uh, Flair basically promotes becoming the world champion again, which he eventually does. Uh, then we go to Sergeant Slaughter, Barry Hardy. Slaughter's run at this point, especially in 92, kind of inconsequential. I liked the heel run. I love early Sergeant Slaughter in the 80s. But this, eh, not exactly uh, a great a great deal here. I never got to meet Slaughter. Never was on any shows with him on the independents. Would have liked to just to have another brain to pick. Uh, double stomp, very... Uh, very adeptly and um, gut wrench supla or gut wrench gut buster by Slaughter as well. I mean Slaughter at this point in ninety two, certainly his best days are behind him athletically. He does an inset where he plugs the Mountie and being an American hero, hooks in the Cobra clutch, and it's over. Razor Ramon um, is would have I actually just thinking about it. Uh, Razor would have been a good opponent for him. Uh, Repo Man out, you know, continues to, uh, in a promo with Gene Okerlund, he, he had stolen a unicycle. Um, he basically says that he is going to get even with the British Bulldog once and for all. Kind of a throwaway promo here, but it was a main house show program at the time. Uh, Barry Horowitz and Bret Hart, meh. You know, I mean, I, I'm i not a fan so much of putting a guy like Brett, who is, at this point, the secondary singles champion in the company and the number one contender to the world's championship. Think about that. Hart and uh, Savage, which they did have a few matches during this time period, 92-93. But imagine if they'd had a full run. That would have been a good time. Uh, international and, and really basic spots uh, by uh, Bret Hart. And then, you know... It, Upside down, uh, inverted atomic drop. Hart comes back with a clothesline. Hart's very clear that he doesn't want to waste any motion. Uh, he does an inset promo where he's 
you know, promises to be continue to be the best of the excellence of execution and uh, uh, acknowledges his feud or upcoming feud with Shawn Michaels, vertical suplex, and a Russian leg sweep by Hart. And um, believe it or not, it's kind of ironic to me that, that Barry Horowitz gets a little more offense than your average enhancement talent. Uh, anyway, Brett gets the sharpshooter, one, two, three, hooks it in, and, and it's done. Uh, Razor Ramon, again, cuts a promo on the way to the WWF. Uh, his uh, kind of walking down the street uh, deal here, and he is uh, kind of walking past a carnival, talks about being one of the best, and and uh, looks to looks to gain some some merchandise spits in a guy's face i mean the razor ramon vignettes definitely worth checking out they do about five or six of these which is longer than the average run to bring a guy in i wonder if vince knew when he brought razor in that he planned to you know make him a central figure or whether it just was they needed extra time or what it was scott taylor and phil apollo phil apollo of course having been a member of world class now an enhancement talent against the Beverly Brothers in this particular uh, induction. I don't think the genius is with them. So Beverly Brothers on their own at this point. Maybe the genius misses a TV taping or maybe he actually officially was done. But actually, no, he is there. Just didn't walk out with them, which I find kind of weird. Um, anyway, so, I mean, Bo and Blake obviously... Guys that were very good, uh, belly to belly suplex, I believe, by Blake, and then um, I really think they could have been more. I think it just came; they came in at the wrong time. Scott Taylor, who eventually becomes Scotty Too Hotty, is a big deal here. Uh, use of the hot shot and then the the uh, greetings from Shaker Heights finish that is a dangerous finish, no matter how you look at it. Tatanka. Talks about uh, wanting to get his hands on Rick Martel here uh, and in, in an event center promo. And the Mountie talks about wanting to get his hands on Slaughter, take Slaughter out once and for all. And we close with that uh, being the close of the program. Till next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.